Well, praise the Lord in Jesus' holy and blessed name. What a beautiful day it is to be in Jesus. So, amen? Amen. Well, Brother Thomas with you here, and this is a ministry of Jesus Christ. And today, brothers and sisters, talking about Jesus Christ, Jesus as the Christ. He is the Christ, the Messiah, the promised one, the anointed one. And we'll begin with Matthew in the 16th chapter, and it's a pretty famous text. Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? And they answered and said, some, some say you're John the Baptist, others Elias, some Jeremiah, one of the prophets. And then he asked them the question of all questions. Who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, thou art the Christ the son of the living God. Oh, and amen. And Jesus doesn't rebuke him or say, no, that's not right. I'm not. Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah. For flesh and blood have not revealed this unto you, but my father, that's who has. And it's on that truth that the church is built, folks. Not Peter. I know that there are those who attribute that it's the truth that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God upon which the church is truly built. It is the fact that he is the anointed one, the one sent to be the savior, period. And there is no other. He is the one and the only. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by Jesus, period. No person, no one can except by Jesus. By Jesus. It is Christ crucified, the message of the cross, that Jesus, Jesus, the Son of the living God, born of a virgin birth, lived a sinless life, the Lamb of God without spot or blemish, lived a sinless life, and is the only sacrifice that can take away our sin the sacrifice of the shed blood of Jesus Christ, his life, his death upon the cross at Calvary is the only price that can pay for our sin. It is the price set by God that he himself would save us because we cannot save ourselves. Not by works, lest any man should boast, not by anything we can say or do, but by Jesus. The finished work of the Christ, the son of the living God. And it is that Jesus went to the cross, bled and died, died upon that cross. Our sins upon him, imputed to him, and his righteousness imputed to us. What a glorious truth. Powerful and profound, life-changing, life-saving. The only message that can. Oh, and hallelujah. Christ crucified. He died upon that cross, his shed blood, the atoning sacrifice for our sin. He was buried and on the third day rose, he rose from the dead. For the father raised the son, Jesus is alive. Our savior is a living savior indeed. And he has ascended to the right hand of the Father, where he now mediates on our behalf. His spirit indwells us. The very spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, dwells in us. Christ in us, the hope of glory. And we have a new life in Christ. For now we are new creatures, born in Christ Jesus. You know, all things, the old stuff's passed away now. New, new. New. When we once lived in sin, now it's righteousness and holiness instead of sinfulness and wickedness and evil. And because now we have eyes to see the truth. We can see the good and do it because it is Christ in us who strengthens us. The power of God. Hence, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So now we see the good and we can do it. We can see the evil 
and resist it. We can see the sin and resist that sin now. Before we were saved, we could see good, but we couldn't do it. The motives of our heart were wrong. So no matter what good we thought we were doing, we weren't doing it for the right reason. So even though it would seem to be good, it wasn't good because our motive was wrong. Our hearts were not right. It was not right. It was not good. Hence, we could do no good thing. We could see the sin. Say, I know I shouldn't do it, but. But we couldn't resist it. And we did it. Indeed. But now, now, new lives in Christ. We can see that good and do it. We can see that sin and resist it. Resist it. God provides an escape. But there's no temptation that has overtaken you, that has come upon you, that is not common to all of us in one way, shape, or form. But God provides an escape and never allows us to be tempted beyond what we are able to bear. And yet so often we surrender. And we shouldn't, if we just hold on, trust the Lord, we would know very quickly that God has provided an escape for every temptation. We need not fall, but walk in the glory of God, proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ. That's a glorious message and that's a glorious truth. And one so needed by the world today, so needed as we see what's going on around us all over the earth today. The message of the cross is not outdated, it's not old. Well, it's not that old blood stuff. Well, you don't talk about that because it's that old blood stuff. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that paid the price for our sin. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All, all, each and every one, not one can escape that truth. There's only been one person ever. And he is the Christ, the son of the living God, Jesus. The one and the only who has ever gone amen to being God in the flesh to do it because we cannot. We cannot. So we bow and humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. He'll exalt us in due time. That's but what saves us is Jesus. And it's Jesus that will keep us saved. It's not our good works. Sorry, folks. Good works don't keep you saved. Works of faith don't keep you saved. The works that James is speaking of on the subject of faith and works. You tell me I have faith. I don't have to tell you I have faith. I'll show you my works. My works, they are the evidence of the saving faith. True saving faith produces works. Well, it's not true saving faith. But true saving faith produces works. I won't have to tell you I have faith. You'll be able to see the evidence of that faith in the believer's life. That's what raises the questions of, what, what do you got going on that you just, all this goes on and you're okay? And what do you got? And what do you know? I know Jesus. You know the saving grace of Almighty God. We know that when the devil raises his ugly head, God is taller. God is bigger, mightier, stronger than all this. Books are deceiving. God is bigger. God is greater. God is the biggest. God is the greatest. He is almighty. He is God. And there is none to compare. No, not one. So today, if you know Jesus, oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. How blessed. How blessed. Let it not slip from your minds and your hearts how blessed you are that you know Jesus today. And the saving message that that is, 
the hope in your life, the joy of your life, the love, the love of your life. It's Jesus. Yes, indeed. And today, if you're one of the folks out there who does not know Jesus as your Savior, if you have not confessed your sin, ask God to forgive you, you can do it. Do it now, right now. Ask God to forgive your sin. Believe that Jesus is the price that pays for that forgiveness. Believe in Jesus. Receive Jesus as your Savior now. For by grace, you're saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. He who bled and died was buried and rose again to pay the price for you. Now you have died and been crucified with Christ. You no longer live, your life is hid with Christ in God. It is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ living out through you, the power of God. And it's a glorious truth. Believe today, receive and become a child of God in Jesus Christ the Son of the living God, in Jesus the Christ, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Today, today is the day. Amen.